So, growth of the cranium and the cranial base. This refers to both chapter 6, which is the neurocranium, and chapter 8, which is called facial form and pattern. But I want to talk really about the cranium and the cranial base and what you really need to know in order to put all these pieces together. The first thing is to understand the concept of the face being built on the cranial base. And so, must be my mom calling. Hello? Just another sales call. So let's go back to where we were, excuse me. Understanding the concept of the face being built on the cranial base. Everything needs to be built on a foundation. If you think about a house, what's the very first thing you do when you build a house? You have to lay the foundation. So the foundation for the human face is what we call the cranial base. And the cranial base, if you had a skull and you were able to turn it upside down, you'd see the sphenoid bone, which we talked about before, sitting right in the middle with the pituitary fossa. Then you'd have the anterior cranial base, which encompasses also the ethmoid bone. And you'd have the posterior cranial base, which contains the occipital bone. So that cranial base forms the foundation for the human face. What does that mean in terms of growth and development? Let me go to the board to illustrate. Now, we talked about the cranium before. Now I want to focus on this cranial base. And so there's a cranial base, and as I said, it has three parts. The occipital portion, the sphenoid portion, and the ethmoid portion. This part is referred to as the anterior cranial base, and the part from the pituitary fossa back is often referred to as the posterior cranial base. So, the foundation of the face built on the cranial base, anterior cranial base, and the posterior cranial base. Three bones primarily making up the cranial base. And at the junction of each of these bones, there's what we call a synchondrosis. A synchondrosis here between the sphenoid and the ethmoid bone. What do you think we might call a synchondrosis that sits between the sphenoid and the occipital bone? Of course, the sphene occipital Synchondrosis. Now, a synchondrosis is essentially the closest thing that we get to an epiphyseal growth plate in the skull. So we've got these synchondrosis, one between the sphenoid bone and the occipital bone. We have another one between the sphenoid bone and the ethmoid bone right here. What do you think we might call that? Sphene ethmoidal synchondrosis. So sphene ethmoidal synchondrosis. What happens at synchondrosis? Well, of course, growth. Growth in length. So the cranial base can increase in length by growth at the sphene ethmoidal synchondrosis or can increase in length by growth at the sphene occipital synchondrosis. Now, just like the long bones of the skull, at some point, these synchondroses fuse and don't grow anymore. It's important for you to know when that is. Sphenethmoidal synchondrosis, right around age 7. Sphenoccipital synchondrosis, right around age 13. Does that mean exactly on the patient's birth date? Absolutely not. It just means in general. Know that the sphenethmoidal synchondrosis fuses first, the sphenoccipital synchondrosis fuses second. What else is key to know about the cranial base? Well, we said the face is built upon the cranial base. We've got the anterior cranial base and the posterior cranial base. So let's take these, this out. The thing to remember is that the anterior cranial base generally supports the Nasal, maxillary, 
structures. So the nasal maxillary complex is associated with the anterior cranial base. So growth of the anterior cranial base carries the maxilla forward. If it's growth of the base here and you get displacement here, maxilla secondarily displaced. We talked about that earlier. The posterior cranial base is associated with the mandible. So the posterior cranial base has the temporomandibular joint articulation. And so growth at the sphenoccipital synchondrosis affects the overall position of the mandible and the growth of the mandible. So we've got sphenoccipital synchondrosis related to the mandible, sphene uh, ethmoid synchondrosis and the anterior cranial base related to the nasal maxillary complex. I think that's the most important aspects um, that you need to know. I look at the growth concepts and the learning objectives here. Know when each synchondrosis is calcified. We've covered that. Understand the concept of the face being built on the cranial base. Absolutely understand that. And know what happens with premature fusion of craniofacial sutures. Now that involves the growth of the neurocranium rather than the cranial base. So that last one, a little bit of a curveball, let's just talk about that for a minute. What paces the growth of the neurocranium? Cranial base is at the bottom where we build the face, but on the top it's the brain, and as the brain expands, we need to have the neurocranium be able to expand to accommodate that growing brain. If you get premature fusion, of all of the sutures, it would be fatal. If you get premature fusion of one or more sutures, you just get a distorted neurocranium. So that's the what happens with the premature fusion of the cranial sutures, and you'll be able to find out more about that in the book. So I hope we've gone over everything you need to know about the growth of the cranium, the cranial base, at least to get started, and have a good time studying, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.